Okay, I think we're live. <laughs> I think. I hope so. Might have a uh, another technical glitch, but let's see uh, if we are working. So just bear with me if you're already with us. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> How are things looking? Oh, I think we're on. I think we're on. I think we're live. Great. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's just turned seven o'clock, a little bit late starting. Um, and welcome to this week's Kendo Gamer. Uh, it's great to be doing this once again. Um, yeah, Kendo Gamer, if you're new to it, if you've not. Um, sort of enjoyed Kendall Gamer before. Uh, basically, Kendall Gamer is um, a series that I do where I enjoy playing video games. I'm here with my PlayStation um, and I live stream uh, chatting about Kendall. Basically, I kind of put my uh, enjoyment of video games together with uh, my obvious passion to, for Kendall uh, and figure that probably there's lots of people that share that as well. So uh, that's the idea behind the series. Um, Obviously, there's a chat section on uh, this side of the screen um, if you're watching us live. Uh, if you're watching us later on YouTube, uh, then down in the comments there. But if you're watching us live, don't forget to use the uh, uh, section there um, to interact with me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and um, it'd be great Yeah, if you, if you want to fire any questions out, uh, whether it's to do with the topic we're talking about today or whether it's to do with anything else related to Kendall. Um, that'd be awesome uh, and we can we can keep it interactive and fun um <clears throat> so uh yeah i'll be uh, talking all about ski today if you haven't uh, seen the uh title of this video uh, we'll be talking all about ski which i'll get into in a moment but whilst i'm doing so i'm going to be playing around on this great game warframe i love warframe i haven't played it in ages uh, so i'm going to be totally rubbish at it uh, but it's not going to put me off um i'm going to uh, it's, it's to be fair it's not like if i practiced it loads i'd be really good, good at it either um, but I'm gonna go on an easy easy mission um, so uh, so as not to embarrass myself too much uh, and I'm going to um, yeah uh, do it that way uh, as I as I chat along so uh, we're gonna look for a, um, a nice easy mission that I can start with um, whilst I'm chatting away so as I say whilst um whilst we're doing this if you are with us live uh, welcome um and yeah do do interact do use the uh do use the uh the chat box there i keep getting this back to front I keep it <laughs> so um yeah, I want to talk all about ski today. Ski is um, a really important topic uh, that I don't think is talked about enough. I don't think it's practiced enough in Kendo either. Um, and I do want to talk a lot about it. So, um, yeah, I thought it'd be a fun thing to, to chat about. Um, so what what is ski? What is ski? Ski is one of the four main target areas, of course, uh, that we have in Kendo. Um, other than men, kote and do, ski is uh, the strike to the throat or the thrust to the throat. Uh, how do I play this game again? Let's see if I can remember. Uh, it's not that one. Uh, you know, I bet, I bet the, the 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 camera there is covering up what I need to. How do I do my powers? I, I don't even remember. I'm gonna have to check my controls now. Uh, this is how long it is since I've played this game. How funny is that? Um, uh, let's see. Okay, no problem. We'll figure it out as we go along. We'll figure it out as we go along. Uh, maybe it's that. Ah, I got it. Okay, yeah, I got it. Right. So, um, yeah, ski is one of the four main target areas um, in Kendo, of course. Um, it's the, the thrust to the throat, and it is, in general, considered uh, something of a uh, advanced waza. Um, that's because um, it's often considered dangerous. Um, in Japan, um, it's, uh, it's not really practiced. You're not allowed to practice ski until you are um, a high school student, okay? So until your uh, high school in Japan is from 15 to 18 years old. Okay, so you're not allowed to do the ski until you're 15 years old. Okay, and uh, the reason for that is, of course, um, th there are elements uh, that could be considered dangerous of ski, uh, particularly as it is a thrust um, with the shinai, of course, uh, to the to the throat area. There are all sorts of things that could potentially go wrong with that um, if it really went 
um, really went sideways, you know. Um, now, it, it's restricted with kids, of course, because... Um, because, like I say, they're not allowed to do it since till they're uh, in high school. And before, uh, before they're in high school, when they're in junior high school or when they're in uh, elementary school, they are basically um, all sorts of different sizes. Yeah, you have kids that are in elementary school that could be, um, uh, they could be really, really tall already. They could have had a growth spurt or they could still be very, very small. And the same also goes for uh, primary school uh, or elementary school kids as well. They are actually um, generally competing in uh, mixed competition as well. They don't separate the genders or the sexes in the... Uh, um, junior high uh, sorry not junior high school in the elementary school tournaments um so there's that as well like you know there's different sort of uh you know they're, they're all sorts of shapes and sizes when they're competing at that age so that's why they restrict it um so of course if you have a really massive kid that's only just started kendall uh which because some some of them only start you know when they're a little bit later um you know even when they're uh, junior high school level or even if they're in the sixth year of elementary school so they'd be like 10 or um, nine or ten years old or eleven even um, and they could be quite big and even the same age child could be much smaller and then they're trying to ski and it could be quite dangerous you can imagine what, how that could go but in general like in my opinion um, and this is probably uh, potentially controversial I don't know but um, I don't consider ski um, amongst adults um, as a, a particularly dangerous was that. Um, I think it, it's more dangerous than it should be because it's under practice because of the fear of the, the the dangers that could potentially be associated with it but in practice most of those you know uh, most of those things I've never heard of actually manifesting um, I've never um, particularly uh, heard or experienced somebody getting particularly injured um, in a, you know, from, from the ski ladder, so, um, and, I, and when I say that, I mean, like, in my own personal experience, or within people that, that I know, not that, like, somebody, somebody's friend, friends, cousins, mother's auntie, knew somebody that once died because they got a ski up the Hakamon, you know, uh, I don't mean like that, <laughs> yeah, um, I mean something that I've seen with my own, my own eyes, or something that someone I know has seen with their own eyes. Um, I've never seen that sort of thing. So I, I think it's over, um, uh, what's the right word? Um, I think I think people fear it a little bit more than it, it needs to be and because of that they under practice it and then when they, they actually decide to have a go at it, which for some reason seems to be in the middle of Shi'ai, like against someone that does Jordan or Nito or something, never done it before but oh, we'll give it a go, um, then yeah, that, that situation can obviously be dangerous. Um, so yeah, um, I think the thing is, is it, it has to be, it has to be practiced uh, in order for it to, um, you know, and it, it, just like any other wazza, right? If you never practice door with you, right? You never practice door, and then all of a sudden you, you decided to have a go at hitting door on somebody in the middle of a shi'ai, there's real potential for injury there, real potential. Um, and that, that sort of injury in my experience is far more common actually but from a missed uh, door strike or corte strike. Um, where you know people have had injuries like in the ribs or uh, collarbones or knuckles, um, then I've that's, then I've seen from sort of dodgy ski. Um, if that makes sense. So um, with that being said, uh, don't forget. By the way, if you're just joining us, um, don't forget to use the comments uh, comments thing on oh, pointing around this side as well. Uh, if you've got questions, you disagree with me, think that I'm wrong for being too to Cavalier with ski or something like that, then <laughs> go ahead and let me know. Um, but um, yeah, that's where I am. So with that in mind, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, I've got my little cheat sheet as always. Um, one of the things I sort of wanted to chat about a bit was uh, when, when, sh when should we practice ski or when should we use ski? Let me get the sword out for a bit on this. Do a bit of chopping. There we go, look at that. When, sh when should we start practicing ski or if you're a teacher when should you start having the people in your uh, club practice ski when should you um, start teaching ski uh, and then of course when uh, when would be a good 
time or opportunity for people to actually put it to the put it to use, should we say, <laughs> rather than put it to the test. Um, so, look, my my opinion on this is um, I start people, I start teaching ski to my students um, as early as possible. Um, now, when I say as early as possible, it's not day one stuff, of course, but by the time um, I, start, I teach it to beginners before they start wearing borgos, um, I, my requirement for people to be able to wear borgo is to be able to perform uh, kirikaishi uh, with kumikomiyashi tayatari um, correctly, yeah. Um, and if they're able to do that, then they must be able to strike an opponent, of course, uh, in, the, in the correct way, without injuring anyone. <laughs> um, and uh, an extension of that is, of course, um, whilst they're practicing, um, we have a section of the time for uh, Kihon Geiko. Um, I need to just open this life support before I lose the game. There we go. Okay, right. Better, better get out of here before I die. Um, what I would do is, uh, you know, when we're doing men, kote, kote men, those sort of waza, I always include ski. Always include ski. And yeah, I expect the, the people that are new, newer to kendo that aren't wearing bulgi yet, um, I expect them to practice it as well. Um, and of course, um, I include uh, a section uh, of the class to teach them how to do it. Um, but yes, I, I expect them to start practicing from then. Um, and the reason for that is because some people have, have said to me in the past that that's like um, that's like a, co a controversial teaching method. I don't know why, but um, I mean I've got the two reasons for that. Is one is ski is part of kendo. It's not like um, it's not a secret technique that um, shouldn't be you know that only masters are allowed to use or some nonsense like that. It shouldn't be over mystified in that way. Um, which is very easy to happen, um, but also it uh, it's important for. Um, oh, I need to find the next life support thing before I die. Though, hang on a sec. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, it's important because practicing ski properly also helps to. Um, it also helps to improve other elements of the kendo. It helps to improve kamae, it, it, and it also helps to improve uh, tenuji. Um, there we go, see if we can pull more. Right, um, it also helps to improve uh, tenuji, kamae, and the grip of the shinai, okay? Because when, when practicing ski, okay, um, you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit, I have to consider when, when doing ski as well. Um, in a minute, but you know you have to. What the way I teach it, right, is for when they're first starting, is to make sure that they're gripping their shinai properly and tightly with the left hand, and not uh, with the right hand. Yeah. If you're gripping the shinai too hard with the right hand, then when they try to do ski, they will certainly miss. So it's a good, good indicator for whether you're holding the shinai properly, um, is if you're able to do ski accurately. Okay. Um, so that's definitely one of the things that, that I think is important about using ski as a, a teaching um, sort of method uh, for, for even beginners. Um, they have to have the, the left hand in the middle um, when they're holding the shinai and then what I have them do, ah, but pick up the control again. Um, <laughs> what I have them do is uh, I have them um, take the chudan no kamae and from there, uh, I would have them step into Isokuito and then take a large step, pretty much remaining in Kamae with Kumikomi um, and placing the, the tip of the sword on the agor of the opponent's men uh, and saying Tsuki as they stamp, and that is effectively Tsuki. Yeah? Um, moving forward from the lower body, from the hips, uh, so it's also important for that part of the practice as well. Um, but also, uh, yeah, and you know, keep their hands down, not to lift their hands up and stuff like that. Um, and to teach them that it's about accuracy and not power, right? And I find that by doing that, then when, it, you know, as they progress, then they're not going to kind of learn Kendall uh, and to treat, in, in a way to treat ski as something that, that sort of should be feared and is this sort of 
secret technique that's only uh you know only available to 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 those that have walked the rice paper <laughs> so yeah um that's 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 in terms of uh kihon and um, that's definitely something i think it should be included in um kihon gate as much as possible uh while i practice as much as possible okay um as far as other aspects of practice, all right. Um, what about jigeko? When when can you do the ski in jigeko? Okay. Well, th there's two aspects of that question, in my opinion. Uh, we can talk about uh, when uh, is a good opportunity to do the ski, and um, when when is it a good uh, time for someone to start using, sort of including ski in their sort of rep repertoire of techniques. Um, so look, I'd like to start with that I think, um, and we'll go on to sort of opportunities for it after I've spoken about that. Um, but uh, yeah, look, when when should you start actively using ski as part of your um, regular keiko practice or jigeko, including it in your uh, repertoire for jigeko? Um, first off, uh, not right away after you start wearing bogu. Uh, certainly, um, for the for a while, uh, I would consider uh, focusing mainly on uh, waza like men and potentially kote, um, probably till uh, at least ikkyo first dan. I would only focus on those two waza. I know it's a little bit boring, um, but if you want to get good at kendo, that's the best way to do it. Um, but you know. Uh, I'm not saying you should never ever do the other techniques, just they should be your main focus. Uh, I probably won't be trying to do ski in Jigeko though, uh, certainly not at that stage. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean after, after that sort of level, if you know, if you're getting quite good at it, then sure, fine. Um, if you feel like you can execute it um, in a good uh, opportunity, um, perhaps when you're sort of first second down, I don't see why not, um, to be honest. Uh, however, the other thing you have to consider though is um, the person that you're practicing with, okay? Um, I want to talk about the concept of ski being considered rude in a minute as well, um, which I, I certainly will talk about, but um, yeah, I'll come to that in a minute. But look, regardless of whether it's rude or not, uh, if you're doing Gokaku Geiko, right? Gokaku Geiko is the type of Jigeiko where you're practicing with somebody of roughly uh, equal skill or ability um, and it's a kind of competitive type of practice where you would um, both look to try and make um, you know, uh, good chances for uh, uh, in, like I say, in, in a kind of competitive spirit Okay, in that situation, great. You know, if you're both a similar sort of grade, uh, depends. You know, you have that sort of relationship with the partner as well. Then yeah, then definitely I'd say that you know, if you're at that stage, then ski would be fair game. But what about if you're doing uh, or you're? Uh, how can I say? You're um, participating as kakadite in kate uh, geiko. Okay. So hikitate geiko is a type of jigeiko where uh, it's with a senior or a sensei or teacher and their uh, focus of the keiko is to help the, um, the student or the lower grade um, to improve. Okay, so their, their, their whole... Um, I'm getting skewered. Uh, their, uh, the purpose of their keiko is, is to help the person improve. And they do that, right, by doing lots of different things. And unfortunately, it, what I experience in the West, right, um, it's not just in the West, sometimes in Japan too, but in, outside of Japan, right, um, more so, is um, the, the, the difference between uh, Tate Geiko and Gokaku Geiko are not understood. Um, we just use the term Jigeiko and people fall into the habit of just fighting uh, and becoming sort of competitive with each other. Um, and uh, you, you don't gain so much out of your Keiko with, by doing that, right? Uh, if your sensei or your teacher is is acting as motodachi for you for hikitate geiko and you're just trying to hit as many fun on them as you can so that you feel good about having beaten them 
then, you know, it, it goes without saying. You aren't going to progress probably in the way that you want to. Okay. Um, so, look, if that's the case, I don't think, like, if I'm practicing with a senior or sensei, uh, I, I'm not going to be slamming ski. Um, because uh, even if even if there's an opportunity for ski, if there's an opportunity for ski, there's probably also an opportunity for men, right? But um, not necessarily, I guess. Uh, but I'm not going to be doing that because that isn't that would defeat the purpose of my Keiko with Sensei, right? It would be against the idea of what I'm hoping to uh, achieve from my Keiko with Sensei. What I want when I'm practicing Ken with 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 a teacher is I want to try and overcome myself, not overcome my sensei. I want to overcome my own um, ego, my own inability to uh, overcome the fear of um, striking or uh, not striking Additional even, um, or being arrived. struck. Yeah, uh, and th those are things that are quite hard to do. Uh, well, they're very hard to do, uh, and I have to try and overcome that and try and make successful strikes. Um, mainly, again, I would concentrate on mainly men strikes, potentially with a few Kote strikes. I wouldn't even do, I don't even do Ojiwaza against Sensei, right? Um, uh, and I know it might not be a popular popular opinion, but I don't do that sort of Waza. I'm trying to overcome my own fears and try to attack with as much Shikake Waza um, as possible um, with, for, with, with Temi. Okay, with Temi, I mean, to throw everything away, right? And um, like banging out ski against Sensei, like in that sort of situation, it doesn't achieve that. It just, it just doesn't achieve that, you know. I've done it in the past, you know, um, when I was sort of before I really got it as well, because no one really taught me the difference between Kokaku Geiko, Hitata Geiko. Um, so I just thought, oh, I'm doing Geiko with this Hachidan Sensei, right? Nice one. I'll try and beat him. And that'll make me better if I can beat him. And that's that's not how it works, you know. That isn't what Sensei is for. That's not um, that's not a an intelligent way to to use the practice with Sensei for your benefit, right? So um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't do it if you're practicing with uh, Sensei, okay? If that makes sense. Now, what about in Shi'ai? What about in Shi'ai? Um, should we use Ski and Shi Ai. Um, well, obviously uh, it's a valid target, right? And it's one of the only, only, it's one of the only four valid targets that we have in Kendo. Oh, I don't want to look at this game. Um, it's one of the only four valid targets that we actually have in Kendo, right? Um, so to negate it is removing essentially a quarter of the available targets that you have. Um, so yeah, if you're in Shi Ai, then who's that? Guy? Um, if you're in Shi Ai. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. This, is, this isn't going quite how I was imagining it to. Um, <laughs> if you're in Shi'ai, then yes, you need to be able to uh, perform uh, ski if necessary. Okay, uh, and that's why I said to you um, that in in my uh, my students, um, I look to teach them ski um, right from right from the beginning. Okay, um, but. Uh, what I don't want to happen, you see, is for someone to go into, into Shi'ai and suddenly they're, like I say, against somebody that does Jordan or Nito, uh, or even not that. Um, but they are they're trying to make a, you know, make make, that up to make make a strike. They're unable to on their opponent they're with. Maybe it's someone of quite slow. Uh, and therefore they're unable to make, a, make an opening for a strike. And because of that, uh, they end up, um, oh, I've, I've died because I've forgotten about, right, let's get out of here, let's get to the end of the, end of the level. Um, because they've uh, forgotten about, uh, sorry, yeah, they, they're unable to make a strike because uh, they, um, you know, they're of equal level and then they decide, oh, let's bang out Ski, let's give, give Ski a try. Um, and then it all goes sort of haywire, right? That's not what we want to happen. Absolutely not what we want to happen, okay? So, um, yes, uh, you, you definitely should consider the ski as valid in Shi'ai. You shouldn't be offended if somebody uses the ski against you uh, in Shi'ai either. 
um, it's perfectly normal um, and that's that's part and parcel of it but that's why you need to practice it uh, as part of your keyhorn so that when it's time to use it in Shi'ai you're able to do it okay so uh, going back to that um, is ski rude uh, is ski rude uh, it's not rude okay it's uh, it's kind of ridiculous to suggest that it's rude uh, to do ski um, but that doesn't mean that you can't do it in a rude way like skiing itself what I mean is how can I explain this without kind of coming off wrong um, ski in itself right is uh, is not rude okay it, you, you can't really say that it's rude um, in itself right um, but yeah, I mean, there's certainly situations where it's better not to do it, okay? Because it might upset someone um, and it could be, uh, yeah, it, it could be, mm, uh, it could be sort of considered rude in that respect, okay? Um, now, why is that? Now, it's not, it's not super rational either, right? It's not super like, it doesn't make sense, but it's kind of just how it is, which isn't, isn't great, I know, but... Um, it, you know, it's just how it is, I'm afraid, uh, in some respects. But like, look, how can I s Right, so I said about Hikitate Geiko, right? So if, essentially, here's what I mean, yeah? If you're with a uh, sensei, right, like Hachidan sensei or something, and they're like offering you targets to strike at, and they're offering you men, and as they offer, because they offer you men, of course, of course, um, you know, uh, of course, ski is also open, isn't it? Yeah, um, of course it is. Uh, but, you know, and then you, you decide to go and ski them when they're offering you men. They're trying to give you the opportunity to strike a good Devana men and you, you decide to ski them. It's like they're going to come off with the impression of, oh, okay, you don't get it. All right, you don't get what what I'm trying to do for you. All right, and that's why some some teachers can take, I wouldn't say offence, but feel frustrated by it. All right, um, because they might feel that like, look, I'm trying to help you here, and you're just trying to satisfy your own ego, um, which may not indeed be your uh, intention, but that's how it can sort of come off. So that's why I say, you know, um, when you're practicing with your uh, with your peers or whatever, then you know by all means, do it. But when you're with teachers, you need to be a bit careful. All right? It depends as well, of course. If it's somebody you've got a really great relationship with, that's that's one thing, you know. Um, but if it's like someone you've just met or it's it's not, you know, it's not someone you practice with regularly necessarily. Um, then you need to be a bit more careful of that because you might upset someone, right? And some some teachers some teachers do think that it's just rude to do it, right? Some uh, some high level teachers do think that it's just rude to do it. So it's just best not to, right? You don't need to, you know, you don't need to do it when you're practicing with sensei. Doing it in Shi'ai is not rude, right? It's not rude to do it in Shi'ai. Shi'ai is there's there's you know Shi'ai is Shi'ai. It's uh, you know, they know what they're getting into when they join the Shi'ai, that they might receive the Ski, right? So no one can complain um, about uh, receiving the Ski um, in Shi'ai. Yeah, it's not, um, it doesn't make sense to do that. They knew, they knew what they were getting into uh, when they decided uh, to join the Shi'ai. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'd say in terms of that, in terms of whether it's rude or not. Um, shoot these guys. There we go. Um, now, what about if it's not rude? Are there any times when you shouldn't do the ski? Yeah. Is there any times when you shouldn't practice or do the ski? Um, and other than what I just said, right? Like with the high grade sensei that you don't really know. Um, yeah, I'd say there are probably a couple of times uh, that it's probably best not uh, to, to do the ski. Um, first obvious one with children. Alright, you don't do it with children, um, because uh, children, like I say, uh, they're not supposed to do ski anyway, so it's a, it's a waza that they don't know, 
Um, and as a note as well, you shouldn't do Jordan against children either if you're a Jordan player or Nito. Like, kids aren't allowed to do those. Uh, so it's nonsense for, to make them practice against it. Um, because they're not ready for it yet, right? Um, so if you do Jordan or Nito uh, and you practice with children, um, certainly under the age of 15, uh, you shouldn't do Jordan. Uh, and if they're under the age of 18, you shouldn't do Nito either. Um, because they're, they're not supposed to do it at those ages, okay? It's not supposed to be part of the kendo experience for them, yeah? Um, also, uh, yeah, so kids is one. Uh, and also, I'd be very, very wary um, if you're, you know, uh, and I don't mean this in a sort of condescending way, but like uh, with some elderly sensei, you know, um, you know, it depends on the sensei though, because there's some sensei that are, you know, obviously quite old, well into the 70s, uh, that are still very, very strong um, physically uh, and able. But then there's others that have, you know, gone through physical hardships, perhaps um, even uh, operations, stuff like that. Um, you need to be careful with that sort of thing too, all right? Um, I don't think that it should be... Um, and you know, even even saying that, I would I would personally be careful of using uh, ski waza um, against someone who, uh, who who I was very different, um, sort of built very differently to. So if it was somebody that was very much smaller than I was, um, regardless of their gender, of course. But um, if it, you know, if it was somebody that was much smaller than me, I probably wouldn't be piling on the ski. Um, unless there was a particular reason for me to do it, like by way of teaching, um, or it was a Shi'ai and there was a good chance for it. But like I said, it'd probably be easier for me to hit men anyway. Um, you know, I'm not interested in Waza that are there just to, just, just to show off. Um, so yeah, I can't think of a situation where I'd probably end up doing that. Um, having said that though, I wouldn't, um, I, you know, I'm not uh, kind of, uh, how's the right way to say this? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, withhold ski from uh, people of the opposite sex, for example. Right? Um, you know, uh, depending on their ability and skill level. Right? Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw ski at beginners either, um, who are new to Borgo, of course. Yeah. Again, regardless of the gender. But if somebody's like uh, third dan, fourth dan, or something, whether they're a man or woman, whatever, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't be looking at uh, caring about that when it comes to whether I choose uh, which was I to use. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, that's sort of my, my sort of thing on that. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that's that's where I am with that. Uh, and then last, I think just to wrap this up now, because um, it's turning a bit ram rambly. Um, <laughs> Uh, is um, points available. points to remember when practicing ski. ski. Yeah. Um, what's okay. Uh, points to remember when you're practicing ski. Um, like I said at the beginning, left hand. All right. Doing ski properly is all about the left hand. If you have your left hand in the middle, in the correct place, uh, at the very beginning, you just stay in kamae. Stay in your kamae. Am I in camera here? Stay in your kamae can't see which hand is showing on the screen. It's, I think it's reversed, but this is my left hand, right? This is my left hand, right? And this is in the, this is in the middle of the body. When you first starting out with ski, you uh, keep it, um, keep that left hand uh, in the middle of your body. Uh, basically stay in chudan uh, and take a big step forward from isokuito, um, from isokuito. Uh, and leave the Kensen pretty much as it is for an accurate ski. And then as you start to build up your ability, get more skill, then you can start to apply a little bit of tenuity as you uh, make the strike, yeah, as you make the strike. But one thing you definitely mustn't do is poke or jab, yeah? It's not like a pop like that, it's not like that. Yeah, don't do ski like that. It's very, very unpleasant. Uh, it's very, um, uh, it's very, very, uh, painful actually uh, so don't do it that way and it, it's not ippon if you do that okay that's not the correct tenuchi all right uh, and also the left foot you must bring the left foot up all right especially with a two-handed ski uh, you want to make sure that you 
got stand with the right and bring the left foot. Lots of people start, step, step forward just with the right foot uh, and leave their left foot there. Um, that's not a great way to practice ski either um, because if you miss, you're not going to be able to defend yourself or make an attack properly. Plus, the idea is you're moving from your lower body. Your posture should be relatively straight uh, with your hips pointed forwards and you step forward as you do with Kodeo Men. That part's exactly the same. Yeah, just the, the, the hands is a little bit different. Okay, and you don't lift your hands too high or lift your elbows up this way. Keep them tucked in, bam, ski that way. Not to highlight that, it shouldn't arc upwards from there. If this is their neck and this is uh, your hands, it shouldn't be kind of an arc upwards like that from your hands like that, bam, like that. Yeah, it should be reasonably straight. Okay, it shouldn't be too high. Yeah, it could be lower down as well if it's the lower level ski, like I said, from Kamae. Okay, um, so that's that. Now, just before I go, I've got a question in the chat about that. Um, thank you very much for that. It says, just out of interest, what are your thoughts on a one-handed version of ski? So, my thoughts on the one-handed version of ski is it's a much harder version than two-handed version, all right? Um, now, look, I said about keeping the left hand, uh, focusing on the left hand, you have to grip the shinai with the bottom shinai, uh, sorry, the bottom th fingers as you do um, when you do, well, every other aspect of kendo, when you do two handed ski, and you need to uh, make sure you don't over grip the right hand because otherwise you come off center this way and that way, all right? That's why people miss, is because they've got too much tension in the right hand. Now, when you go to one handed ski, you don't have. Um, that sort of uh, support or that backup for the tenuchi, like similar to with other types of katate waza. Um, lots of people that do jordan, for example, when they hit men or kote, it often doesn't have sae. Yeah, it's not good tenuchi, it's just bash like that. And that's not what you want. It wants to be a nice pop like that, doesn't it? And it's the same with ski. Now, the benefit of doing the long range ski is, uh, sorry, the long range ski, the one handed ski, is that it's long range. Yeah, you can do it from further away, okay? Because you're gonna take your hand off, you're gonna get extra reach, yeah? Um, however, it does take practice as well. So once you started to get more comfortable with two-handed ski, I definitely uh, advise including the one-handed ski as well. If it's a waza you wanna include in your repertoire, certainly useful. Um, it's not there to make you look good, right? It's not there as a show-off waza, it's there as a tactical waza um, that is useful against uh, a person who, who um, is trying to keep you at long range and is kind of uh, content or settled a little bit, all right? Um, I did mention, actually, um, that I talk a little bit about the opportunity for the ski, and I haven't probably covered that, but essentially, it, the, the time for the ski is the uh, itsu tatokoro, it's called in Japanese, the, t the time when the opponent has sort of stopped, they're in between thoughts or breaths, <sighs> And or, or when they're sort of waiting to do some kind of ojiwaza. That's the time you do it. And if you're doing the two-handed or the one-handed, from your kamae, you want to, when you become competitive at it, you want to use it in shiai, it has to become instantaneous. It can't be here and then here this way. It has to be from your kamae, from here, bam, ski, this way. Yeah, or one-handed from here, bam, ski, this way. Yeah, um, that's that's how it has to be. But that has to come with lots and lots of practice. Yeah, um, so yeah, in answer to your question, I like the one-handed version. Uh, it's much harder. Um, I haven't um, made many ippon with it myself uh, in my own career, but um, on you know, it's it, it's very very useful um, <clears throat> if you can do it right. Okay, but it needs much more practice even than the one the two-handed one. Um, Finally, before I close as well, I do remember somebody talking on the, fa the Facebook group about how could you improve your accuracy with ski. And people have talked about like putting pads on the wall or dangling corks and stuff from the uh, washing line and stuff like that. Yeah, they're, they're all sort of fun, effects, fun exercises that probably can help with that sort of thing. Um, certainly with practice. But look, I don't approach it from that point of view and I've never done that sort of practice either. I've never done the sort of practice where I've sort of poked at stuff hanging off the wall or stuff like that. Um, accuracy comes from correct kamae and correct use of the left hand, all right? So um, to improve your accuracy with ski, you have to improve uh, your ability to make the good kamae, your left hand position and your grip with the left hand and the correct balance of power between the left hand and right hand. And that will improve your, your uh, accuracy with ski. Okay, um, so that's that. Okay.
So, that's it for today. Uh, <laughs> uh, I kind of bounced here and, here and there and everywhere whilst I was trying to concentrate on this. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, let me know. Leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, thank you very much to everyone who joined me live uh, and for, for your comments too. That was great to have the questions. Um, don't forget as well to uh, like, share, subscribe, all that sort of thing, you know, all the social, what have you. Um, tomorrow we'll be doing Kendo Rant. Uh, you can post a question for it in the Kendo Show Early Access, Early Access Group. Uh, there's a link in the uh, description down below. Um, yeah, that's it. Don't forget to shop at Kendo Star. Because uh, if you like what we do, we've got Kendall rant tomorrow. We've got another one of these videos next week. And we've got the Kendall analysis video coming as well on Friday once again. Um, if you like what I'm doing, uh, you can support me by shopping at Kendall Star. That's my website that sells the best Kendall equipment ever made, ever in the world. That's my opinion, of course. But um, people seem to agree if you look at our reviews. So <laughs> thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.